Hey everyone, it's Greg Tastic here, and today I'm going to be doing my first game review on the channel. I'm going to be reviewing a game that released on Steam a few months ago called The Signal from Tulva. This game was described as a Far Cry with robots when it came out, however I couldn't get into it when I first tried to play it. I decided to give it a second shot, and I'm going to overview the game itself as well as test that Far Cry comparison. Continue watching to find out if the comparison was earned or not. The Signal from Tolva is an open world sci-fi game where you take control of a robot who has come across a strange signal that he wants to investigate. Obviously, the signal comes from the planet Tolva, a world inhabited by warring factions of robots. It is explained to you that there are many of other strange signals coming from the planet and you'll have to go down and investigate. Rather than go down physically yourself, you hijack a robot from the planet and explore the world through him. If your robot is destroyed, it's not a problem as you can just hijack another one. When you land on the planet, the resources you have are explained to you. You can equip your robot with a primary and secondary weapon as well as a pistol. You have no ammo. Instead, the weapons use energy which takes a certain amount of seconds to recharge depending on the weapon. You are also given a shield that you can deploy on demand as well as a special ability called an AoE to use with the cooldown time between uses. Your robot can also upgrade its hazard suit, which is basically just a way of blocking off certain game areas until you've acquired the correct suit to traverse its hazards. Most importantly, you have a scanner which you can bring up to survey the world around you. The in-game world is not terribly huge compared to other open world games. The world is scattered with a collection of bunkers, respawn beacons, and mission waypoints. You can capture and fast travel to bunkers, which are small bases where you can edit your loadout, repair your robot, and meet up with allied robots. Respawn beacons, obviously, are another set of locations where you can fast travel to or respawn to at, but don't allow you to repair or edit your loadout. Besides for that, the world is not inhabited by much. The environments are slightly varied, and there are various locales that seem interesting aesthetically, but the world is just not very inhabited. There are robots roaming around, but a large majority of them stick to hanging around the various waypoints in the game. You can also use the scanner to find material, which is like currency that can be used to upgrade your robot's weapons, AoE, shield, and hazard suit. I'm not going to go deep into the story, partly only because there isn't much story to get into. There is very little in-your-face plot and less than a handful of cutscenes. The story is flushed out mostly through scanning points of interest in the world, whether it be the necessary missions or optional ones that provide further detail. The story's main plot is kind of like the side plot of a AAA game, comparable to finding documents or audio logs in games like Borderlands or Bioshock among others. I won't say there's no story, but it's not heavy and certainly not in your face. All I can do to tease you is tell you that there's something strange about the planet you're investigating and you have to dive further into find out what's going on. If you have the patience to digest all the story through reading, then you can be entertained. If you don't want to put in the work, however, it's a non-starter. There is also a PDF lore book that comes with the game that I honestly did not read. <laughs> All in all, it seems like an intriguing idea that they didn't have the resources to make truly compelling. On that note, the gameplay can be described very similarly. If I could use one word to compare this game with Far Cry, it would be slow. Your robot moves around at a snail's pace, and there isn't even a sprint feature to make it feel like you could go faster. Combat is extremely straightforward and simple. You can scan your enemies and target them like in Far Cry, but outside of that it's just simple gunplay. There are no different methods of attack, no verticality to the game, and no rewards like executions for being stealthy. You basically just shoot, take cover, deploy your shield, and shoot some more. You can use your AoE as well. There are a few different powers ranging from dropping a turret to forcing robots to flee. The AoE is basically used as crowd control when the game throws too many robots at you. The gameplay isn't horrible, but the excitement factor of a Far Cry is not there. It's fun to upgrade your different weapons, but you can't customize them. All you can do is choose from different ones that have varying damage, energy, reload time, and scopes. One of the real missed opportunities in this game is an ability to recruit and command allied robots. You can recruit two at a time to help you. 
However, I hated using this tool because it was more annoying than helpful. First, it is used in the form of your secondary weapon, meaning you give up your secondary weapon to command the robots. That wouldn't be too bad, except the robots sometimes run away from battle randomly and are not that powerful. If they run away, you not only lose your friends, but also don't have a secondary weapon to help yourself with anymore. It would have been really nice for this feature to have been implemented better. Either better robot AI, or allowing it to be a power instead of taking away your secondary weapon. If you're going into this game thinking it's a perfect Far Cry clone, you'll be disappointed. The combat is slower, traversing the world is slower, and the world is boring at times. It is very robotic in some ways. There are robots, bunkers and spawn points, as well as random sci-fi inspired points of interest. The world feels kind of like an uninhabited halo. However, what the game has going for it is it's small, short, and cheap. The lack of a great story, compelling locations, and characters is somewhat bearable in a 6 hour game that while open world feels pretty linear. Even though it's not the most exciting game ever, there is a sense of accomplishment that comes from going around and capturing all the bunkers and beacons as well as scanning as many points of interest that you could find. The story even becomes slightly interesting around 2 hours into the game if you can handle the reading. For $20, or cheaper if you can find it on sale, it does provide 6-8 to eight hours of a glimpse of what could have been a much cooler game with a higher budget and more resources. If you are into open world games and don't mind checking out games with good ideas that could have been flushed out more, it's definitely worth a play. Also, you need to be able to read. <laughs> Otherwise, you can always play Blood Dragon again.